the endocrine disrupting industrial toxins in fish don't just affect our gonads, but other glands too, like getting thyroid disruption from the flame retardant chemicals, which literally just settle out of the atmosphere, such that even fish who only swim around Antarctica are contaminated. Levels in the United States, though, are higher than anywhere else in the world. Researchers recently looked at U.S. retail salmon. And where do you think they found the most contamination? Six choices. Wild caught with skin, wild caught without skin, organically farmed salmon with or without skin, or conventionally farmed salmon with skin or without. The differences were really marginal, but the worst? Organic farmed salmon with skin. The wild cod was least contaminated. Note also that it didn't really seem to matter much whether you took off the skin, which suggests that the toxins are actually concentrated into the fish muscle itself. PBDEs aren't the only new industrial toxin we're finding in fish. This year, researchers looked at the amount of polychlorinated naphthalenes in fat that was sucked out of the butts of New Yorkers in liposuction samples. Where in the diet was it coming from? Out of about 52 daily nanograms, 50 came from fish. What's the bottom line? Until safer and more renewable sources of long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, plant-based sources, become more generally available, it would seem responsible for physicians to refrain from advocating that people should increase their intake through fish. But it is available now. There are a half dozen brands of microalgae-derived DHA on the market now. I just show this one because I found it to be the cheapest. And it's 100% bioequivalent to what's in fish, a safe and convenient source and less likely to go rancid than fish oil. As you can see on the little handout that came with this DVD, I recommend people take about 250 mg of microalgae-based DHA every day, which is about five times the average American intake.